Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ryan. I'm a former commando from the United Kingdom. Today we've got a bit of news on Ukraine. We're going to talk a little bit about a few articles that's in the Kiev Independent because I think it's quite pertinent information. And as always, I like to keep you guys up to date. Um, a few things have came out of the woodworks of recent. I am off social media, Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that because it's just of no use to me. I don't have any benefit to that um, platform. It doesn't give me any benefit really, even in terms of views and stuff like that. So the only place you'll find us on is here um, in the comment section. And um, we're also using Telegram now. I'm going to start building that up. I've got a couple of bots on there that's able to automate um, some of the news outlets and things like that. So if you want to follow me on, um, on Telegram, link is in the description as well as Rumble where I'll be posting these videos as well. And on Patreon, which is a, an alternate means for you to be able to support me guys. But if you want to support me further than this, Patreon and um, joining the members via YouTube, just Press the join button or link is in the description. That's the way to do it, guys. But introductions over. Let's get straight into the news. So this is an article I was reading just there. U.S. Defense Secretary, Ukrainian forces can retake Herzen. Now, United States Defense Secretary um, Lloyd Austin said on November 3rd that he believes Ukraine can liberate Russian-occupied Herzen in late August. Um... Ukraine began sudden counteroffensive liberating over 400 square kilometers in Herzen Oblast. So we we obviously seen um, that that take place in in August, guys. It seems like a million million years ago now. Um, on the issue of whether the Ukrainians can take the remaining territory of the west of the Dnieper River and Herzen, I certainly believe that they have the capability to do that. Austin said during a press conference today, I believe that was. Um, you know, if the United States are saying it, you got to take note, really. Russian forces stepped up the deportation of local residents from Herzen or Blast. Number the first amid the Ukraine's counteroffensive, Russia ordered up to 70,000 residents within a 15 kilometer zone to east of the Dnipro River to be displaced deeper into the region. So, you make of that as you wish, guys. We spoke of that over the past few weeks about the deportation of um, residents, you know, the unlawful deportation of, um, of children and, 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 and women to certain areas where they don't want to go. It's, it's terrible what's going on, really. It's a variant of ethnic cleansing from that region. On October 24th, uh, Krylo Budnov, Ukraine's intelligence chief, told um, Yoslanka Prada that Russia troops were creating the illusion that they were leaving um, Kursonstead. They were bringing new military units there to prepare for defence. So, um, quite interesting update that I want to go through a few of these updates for you troops while we're on because we're only a few minutes into the video and it's going to be quite a quick one. Um, before we do that, let's jump onto the map here. So we go to the south region, we can see hers and there's no updates there in terms of what's happened. The only update today is clarification on some of the um, areas on the front. Other than that, we haven't had anything on this map for quite a while now. If we jump yesterday, the only things that happened was the enemy regained control of these areas. Okay, uh, Bezamin and Herzen region. So we didn't speak about that yesterday. Um, so we're talking in and around these areas. Yeah, not, not much, guys. Not much to talk about in terms of the map study. Um, we can see up here there's been various different changes in terms of enemy movements back and forth. But you can see that um, within this region of Donetsk, this oblast, the Russians are still trying to push on through quite a bit. Um, you know, uh, if we move up to the north there again, we've seen movement and traction yesterday and the day before in Makivka and uh, Novodayan. We've seen that the um, enemy pushed forward of that. But if we look a little bit deeper into these enemy lines, we can see that the terrain there is um, quite, quite hilly in these areas. All right, you've got um, like a ravine and river to the right hand side, the east side of this area, closer to where Svato is. So in terms of strategic value, I think only one of these areas hold real strategic value. It's Novodayan. Uh, Makivka allegedly doesn't really hold that much um strategic value in terms of Ukraine being too bothered about that area. I believe Novodayan is the area of interest that they really need to push for. Um, but yes, Vato still on the agenda and whether or not we can take that in the next few weeks and months, I'm not too sure of that troops to be absolutely honest with you. 
Talk a little bit of politics now. Troops in terms of uh, Zelensky attending the G20 summit. He has said that he won't attend if uh, Putin attends. <laughs> it's going to be quite an awkward uh, moment, that really, isn't it? He says, my position and the position of Ukraine was that if the leader of Russia participates in the summit, then Ukraine will not. President Vladimir Zelensky said on October 3rd, G20, um, 2022 G20 summit will be held in Indonesia on November 15th. Zelensky and Russia President Vladimir Putin were both invited to participate in the summit. A number of Western countries, including the United Kingdom, said Russia has no moral right to sit at the G20 meeting due to its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Now, let's talk about this. This is absolutely outrageous to me. If this does take place, we truly do live in the Matrix because we've got two guys, you know, the leader of, the, of two nations, fighting each other one's you know unlawfully invaded another country um, and the other's fighting for the uh, the Ukrainian side and if these two guys can meet civil in and have some form of discourse even if it is aggressive in an area where um, you know it's uh, <sighs> Guys, I'm, I'm lost for words. If that can take place, then yeah, this war shouldn't happen. It should not be, we should not be fighting wars ever if these things can take place. So Zelensky says he doesn't want to go if Putin's there. No, I say go. You know, both of them should go. They should both have it out. If they want to put the boxing gloves on, have a bit of a fisticuffs. I know the Indonesians like uh, like a good boxing match now and again. Um, yeah, just let them two fight each other to death instead of having to put out troops on the lines. This is the problem with war, see. Um, you know, you've got leaders of nations having bright eyes ideas the bright ideas club as i would like to say and uh yeah why don't we just make these two fight it out you know we said this once on the channel say it again put these two in a ring no holes barred no gloves or anything one man comes out all right that might be pretty harsh isn't it but you know what is harsh is the war that's going on in ukraine the people dying every single day needlessly on both sides okay i'm not a sympathizer for any side of the uh of the war but one thing's for sure i will take the side of the soldier because i have been a marine in um in a, in a, in a past life so to speak a few years ago now um but yeah that's the thing troops all right i'm i'm on i'm on the soldier's side it doesn't matter what side we're talking about and that's the that's the problem with this whole thing all right it's terrible now putin said in late october that he didn't decide whether to attend the g20 meeting in bali Prior, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, told ABC News that Russian President Vladimir Putin is rational, but the decisions he's making are maybe better put. His objectives are not rational, which makes him not a rational individual, all right? The U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, is um, talking absolute codswall up there. How can you say, in the one sense, that Vladimir Putin is rational, but the decision-making he is making is not rational? That makes him an irrational person who doesn't have... Oh, this, this is crazy, guys, all right? U.S. Secretary of State. Now, I love the United States, okay? Don't know too much about Anthony Blinken, but, uh, yeah, you're talking absolute shit, mate, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> How can you say in one sense he's not rational, but in another sense he is? He's either rational or he isn't. If his decision-making isn't rational, that certainly does not make him a rational person. Um, oh God, Beth. Guys, I've had one too many coffees today. What we've seen thus far is no interest on the part of Putin in, meaningf is in meaningful democracy. Blinken said, yeah, I'm not bothered what he says anymore. That's... Um that's outrageous, guys. The, the the nervous some of these people, man. Let's have a look and see what else we have got on there. So G20 Summit, okay. This is a one I want to look into. Official Russian troops step up attacks on civilian in occupied Mariupol. <laughs> Mariupol, Mariupol, Mariupol. The Russian forces continue patrolling the city and conducting ID checks as well as checking residence houses and personal phones, pro-Ukrainian pro photo symbols or posts on social networks and advertise it to Mariupol Mayor uh, Petro said on the 3rd. That is terrible, isn't it? You're getting you're getting these patrols taking place, checking what you've got on your phone now. So it's not just uh, you're, you're, you're being held captive within areas. You can't have an opinion. You can't have a preference for whatever. You can't have photos on your phones. This is not... Uh, this is not the, the, the world that, that no one should be living like that, okay? No one should be living like that. We should have gotten over that in the 1940s. We all know what happened in that decade as well, don't we? It seems to be happening right now in the 2020s. The official um, added that about 15,000 people are currently listed in so-called filtration with a maximum of 30 people being filtered daily on average. Five out of 30 people filtered disappeared due to arrests. What? 
Five out of 30 filtered people disappear due to arrests right in the uh, building of Occupy's police station, according to... Right, um, okay, that's that's an interesting... I don't know what to make of that. Um, okay, next article. Ukrainian intelligence, Russian troops move proxies from hers and closer to Crimea. Over the past few weeks, Russian installed proxies and collaborators in Herzen have been resettled to hotels on Arabat split between Lake Shvias and the Azov Sea, the Defence Ministry Intelligent Directorate reported today. They're the recreations um, centre's owners are forced to host them while the Russian military is searching for even more vacant premises, according to Ukraine's intelligence. You can't make this up. Russian troops are also continuing to forcibly relocate civilians from the right bank of Dnipro River. They are displacing Ukrainian children from the Herzen boarding schools to Crimea. Absolutely terrible, guys. Um, the fear that they must be going under at this moment in time, the kids, is absolutely no one's business. So it, it must be terrible for them and you're scarring a generation for life and what happens when you scar a generation of the younger um of the younger part of our generations they come back with vengeance 10 15 20 years later we've seen that happen in the middle east displaced children due to war coming back 10 15 years later with vengeance in their hearts that's just how it works guys and can you blame them to a degree i'm not condoning any actions by anyone that's um immoral in any way shape or form but come on think about it you know these kids are going to be traumatized and they're going to grow up with hatred in their heart. Tell me I'm wrong, guys. Tell me I'm wrong, because I'm not. Uh, particularly uh, to the one psychiatric hospitals in Semaphore, the De Defence Ministry wrote, it's terrible what's happening in Dnipro River at this moment in time. Relocating civilians in left, right and Chelsea, it's just not good. Some say that that's happening as a result of potentially the threat of a nuclear... Um, weapons of mass destruction being detonated within that area. I'm sceptical at that. I don't think that's the case. A lot of people do think it's the case. It's not my opinion, though. Now, the Russian occupation forces stepped up the deportation of local residents from Herzen Oblast uh, the first of this month, amid Ukraine's counteroffensive, Russia ordered up to 70,000 residents within a 15 kilometre zone east of Dnipro River to be displaced deeper into the region. October 24th, Krylo Budanov, Ukraine's intelligence chief, told Ukrainska Pravada that Russian troops were creating the illusion that they were leaving hers and instead they were bringing new military units to prepare for defence. An illusion may, may be, but one thing's for sure, guys, is people suffering all over the place and it's not fair no matter which way you look at it, okay? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just the way it is, but it shouldn't be that way, okay? And uh, that's, that's it, guys. We haven't got much in terms of news. What I am building in the next few days or so is the ability to be able to do podcasts um, on this channel, bringing in guests to give an alternate opinion on the war. Um, I even messaged Andrew Tate the other day, see if he'll get on the show. It'll be interesting to hear his thoughts. At the end. <laughs> you know, I might lose a few subscribers because of that, but we'll see. Might actually have Andrew Tate on the show if we can get, uh, get a response from him. But no, the people that I will be looking at getting on the show is um, Operator Startsky. He's a great guy. I've been on his podcast. I want to return the um, invite to him. Arto Rehi, the Estonian soldier. Um, hopefully he'll come on the show. Definitely want to have Dennis um, on the show. But he's really hard to get a hold of. He doesn't respond to comments because he gets that many on his channel. The guy must be, you know, going crazy with how much his channel's exploding and going up in the comments and stuff. But if anyone can contact any one of those for me, if you guys could go and spam their con comments and say, listen, um, Ryan Forrest wants you on the podcast. That would be a start, guys. But other than that, look forward to that happening very, very soon, troops. Um, but that's it for today. Short and sweet. Well, short-ish. And I'll see you in the next one, troops. Whatever you're doing, peace.